And we're live. It's on the intro right now. So, welcome to Down in Front's 50th episode. Woo! Woo! Live we've been, studio We've been doing this for over a year now. Joel has actually been doing this now for over a year. Uh, we've done 50 wonderful episodes. Well, we've done 49, 48 wonderful episodes, thanks to Logan. Uh, and uh, this would be our 50th. And we're going to review some movies. Hold on. <clears throat> Hello. <laughs> Live TV, ladies and gentlemen. I am. Hold on. Eh. Okay, now talk. Hey, don't forget to don't forget to mention we got second place at the uh, at the contest. So on the phone right now is Carl Neitzert, uh, the former host of the show, or one of the former hosts of the show. And uh, Carl, you're live on TV right now. Hello. He hung up. Sorry, there's a serious delay. Uh, Carl's ruining the show right now. <laughs> <laughs> Don't first forget to mention that we got second place. Okay. Bye. Bye. All right. <laughs> That's all you're going to get from Carl. That was Carl. Woo! Yay. So uh, eventually in this show, we're going to review some movies, but we wanted to take a minute to... Reflect. Reflect. I'm not sure what we want to reflect on. I don't know if we really should reflect. There's not much to reflect on. No. What was your favorite episode? Um, my favorite episode, as far as quality-wise, um, which 48. one? Forty-eight. Forty-eight. Shut up, Logan. Lo uh, Forty-eight was the best. Forty-eight was not the best. Forty-eight was the worst. Oh, no, that was, was the, the public apology one, the one that Logan had to publicly apologize for. Yeah, but that was, it was kinda, like two weeks ago. That was kind of fun, though. Yeah, but dude, as soon as we do the show and I walk out of here, I forget everything I say, and I don't even have a show. That's pretty sure. That's pretty true. Yeah. I did like. Uh, uh, the one, the pirate radio one, though. The one where we stopped halfway through? We Let's hope that stop. doesn't happen we, here. We ran out of things to say. Yeah. So we just kind of fell apart, and then we played some public domain stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so. we're going to try for that on this one, too. Sure. Yeah, live TV. We'll just sit here and stare at the cameras. Oh, back there is Logan <laughs> uh, on the screen there, uh, if we can get rid of the graphic that's over top of it. Uh, that is Logan, our wonderful director, as well, joined by Brendan, who is joining us again after a eight-month hiatus from the show. Uh, Hello. And Everybody Logan, away from the booth. Say hi from the booth. Hello. Hi. And oh, over there on hi. graphics, running graphics today is Jen Edwards, she's one of our newest additions. Yeah, she's new. She's new. She's awesome. <laughs> and uh, so you can come back to me now. Thank you. All right, go ahead and zoom out, Sam. <laughs> Pros. And we have a studio audience here as well to celebrate the show with us. Uh, we will. Let's review some movies, shall we? We shall. Why not? Why stand on occasion or whatever let's the property is? Let's do what we're best movie. at. Yeah, we're best at reviewing movies. What did we see this week? Uh, Repo Men's. Repo Men, Diary of a Wimpy Kid, and... The Bounty Hunter. Bounty Hunter. Now, Bounty Hunter is a action film starring action hero... Jerry Gerard Butt. Butler. Yeah. And it features him as a bounty hunter hunting down dangerous criminals, right? Mm. No. 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 This no. is another example of why Jerry Butt should not be a Hollywood star. I'm sick of that dude, man. It's I'm like, not sick of him. He just oh, needs I'm, to be doing what he's good at. Well, yeah, he's good at looking mean and punching people in the face. Right. Or stabbing people with a sword. Yeah. Not... He hasn't done that, and he's not. Well, here's here's my thing: is he's he's really cool, like as a physical presence, and you know he's got that bad attitude that's just really cool to see on screen. Even in Law Abiding Citizen, he was awesome. That was him, right? Am I wrong? Yes. Yes. It was Jamie Foxx. But yes. anyway, he, he it was a Jamie Foxx vehicle. 
Right. <laughs> but he was he was great in, in that kind of stuff. But when he's doing these romantic comedies, the dude has no charisma. You know, like he goes up there and when he smiles, he just you feel like he just he should only smile when he's like pulling his sword out of somebody. Yeah. You know, when he's like leaning up against a wall and, you know, giving me the wink and no, I, that just it turns me off. He's good at yelling dramatically. Yeah. That's about it. Yeah. As he can't be a, a romantic comedy guy. It just doesn't work. Yeah. It's madness. Yeah. So uh, Bounty Hunter, let's be honest. Did okay. we watch the whole thing? <laughs> <laughs> No. We got about halfway through the Bounty Hunter uh, before we both got, incre- like at the exact same time, both got incredibly bored and walked out. It was about halfway through, so we, we gave it a fair chance. Well, I mean, we've walked out of better movies, too. Yeah. So, I mean, this has been the first one in a long time where we just peaced out. Yeah. It's just like nothing was happening. Nope. It didn't progress at all. They showed, like, what happens in the movie they showed in the first 10 minutes, and... Then nothing really happened for twenty minutes after that. Um, so, yeah, yeah, it was it was totally worth leaving. You've got, I mean, Gerard Butler playing the husband who's hunting down Jennifer Aniston, who looks like crap now. By the she, way, she looks kind of beat up. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what John Mayer did to her, but she's just she's horrible now. <laughs> and I mean, I used to really like her. Like she's just kind of fun and quirky, whatever mm-hmm. you know, and super hot. But now, I mean. She's got nothing to offer. She's the same. I mean, she's what she's playing. I had to think about it for a second, but she's playing Rachel over and over and over again. I liked Rachel more. Well, yeah. And she. Why is he <laughs> pointing? What do you want, Logan? What? Talk to me. Is he giving me the wrap it nothing. up? No, no, we're just talking. We're no. talking amongst ourselves. Well, you're fingering in the air randomly. No, we're not. You're freaking me out. Remember, you're on screen. Yeah. We're not. Okay. Can I get to the point now? <sighs> Sorry, she's playing Rachel again. Andy, let Joel get to the point, please. She's playing Rachel. Yeah, that, yeah. And it was okay. annoying. So, Bounty Hunter was crap. Don't see it. There was also that, that uh, the, the best friend or whatever, who was like pastel and kind of gay, but not really. Who's best friend? Jennifer Aniston's, like, well, it wasn't best friend. It was the dude that, like, wanted to do it. Oh, her. Jason Sudeikis. Whatever. From The Office. What? His, the guy with the mustache. Yeah, yeah, he's got a mustache. No, not The Office. Uh, what are you talking 30 about? Rock. He was on 30 Rock. Yeah. He, he has a mustache. Sucked. I don't care where he's from. He needs to go back there. It was horrible. Yeah, he was kind of annoying. Yeah, but anyway, we went through about I half totally this movie. I totally forgot about him, too. Yeah, yeah exactly, because he served no purpose, but had like half the screen time. But it... Does your costume smell? Costume smells like... Ugh, maybe it's me. Bacon wrapped with feet. Bacon and feet. And whiskey. <laughs> anyway. Special what? thanks to Gotcha Costumes <laughs> uh, for yeah. loaning us these costumes. <laughs> Hopefully they're not watching at the moment. Uh, what else did we see? What else did we see? How are we doing on time, boss? We're doing fine on time. We've done like two minutes. <laughs> yeah, you're okay. Everything's yeah. cool. Everything's peachy, guys. Yeah, we're still okay. live. We're live, baby. Woo. Live. Graphic. Live. Okay. Uh, gra- hang on. Graphic. Live. Yay, yeah. live! Yay! Yeah. We are live. Live. Okay. 50th episode. 50 episodes. Downhill from still, here, baby. We still are a train wreck. <laughs> <clears throat> What's next? Diary, Diary of a Wimpy, Wimpy kid. kid, which Andy loved. I didn't go see it again love and it. again. I'm going to see it again tonight because I loved it. Yeah. Diary of a Wimpy Kid's about an tr- adaptation of a best selling novel about. A kid in middle school, which I could never believe in a million years that they could make a film about a kid in middle school and the trials and tribulations of middle school. But it was actually a pretty funny movie. I mean, get the graphic out of my face. <laughs> Stop looking at the monitor. Anyway, uh, yeah, so the kid goes to middle He spends like an entire year of middle school throughout the span of this film. And uh, he deals with bullies and, you know, friendships and trying to be popular and all this stuff. But it wasn't really, I mean, it was perfect for kids about 10, 10 to 13 years old and kids in middle school. What? What? It was. No. Yes. Not at all. It's a PG movie. It's a, it's a heartwarming little romp through middle school. There's nothing heartwarming or rompy about this stupid movie. Joel didn't like it. No, it's ridiculous. This is a movie... Sorry, my helmet's getting a little crazy here. Um, but this is in case stuff gets real. Mm-hmm. Um, or no, the, the, the tr- lattice falls We've got construction going on here. I'm trying to be safe. <laughs> All right, Diary of a Wimpy Kid, based on a book 
uh, which they even have to tell you at the beginning of the movie, this is a movie, it's not a, it's not a diary, it's a movie. Okay, don't talk to me like I'm an idiot. Even if I'm a kid, don't talk to me like I'm an idiot. That was first mistake. They I don't already, think this movie did that. They are no, that yes, they did. It says it right there on the stupid posters. Like this is a movie, not a diary. No, Shut but up. no, that's Why, the I'm, walking, I'm not that's going to the, the library. Tagline. The tagline is the kid wants to prove a point that it's not a diary. They it's slapped a me in the face and called me ignorant in the very beginning of the movie. I'm totally like, missing the point. All right. Anyway, beyond that, let's move past that. The the little kid, what's his name? Greg. Sure. Sure. His name will be Greg for the rest of the review. Uh, the main star, atrocious, annoying, just. It just pissed me off. He's the very first thing he does is he jumps out of bed and does a little shimmy, Eee! and then runs like to this. I'm sorry, but I've just I've seen better kid actors doing way better things than this kid. All he's doing he's a he's a little jerk, is he not? Tell me he's not a jerk. Oh yeah, he's a jerk. That's yeah, the, but that's that's his character. Right, but that doesn't mean I have to like him. Sure, he's, he's unlikable. A, yeah, right. But the main thing about this movie is for kids, the dialogue. And what's actually going on is going to be way above most kids' heads when they're if they're like ten years old. Mm -hmm. The message and all that it's it's going to be lost on them, <clears throat> and it's too stupid for adults to sit. Sorry, it's too stupid for most adults to sit back and enjoy mm -hmm. without you know dumbing it down a little bit. So I don't know who they're shooting for, but. There's maybe like three or four people that this would actually be good for, and it's probably people that read the book, and then they're going to see the movie and be like, oh, it was nothing like the book, and then they're going to go home and, and complain about it. So for me, it was just a big waste of my time. Okay. What was good about it, Andy? I just thought it was fun. I thought it was cute, and it was fun. It had, you know what? I can't say that I didn't laugh. I did yeah, laugh see? a couple of times. There are some humorous points, and it's definitely geared towards adults and kids. Let's answer this. Did you see the whole movie, Andy? No, I only slept through like five minutes of it. <clears throat> uh, I don't know what's going on. What's going on in the booth? Nothing. Oh, Nothing's going on. You didn't start a fire, did you? Okay, good. No. So anyway, there was, it was kind of fun, uh, and <laughs> it was definitely geared towards like 13, 14-year-olds who can identify with it. Now, just because you're 30 years past the age group that this movie is geared for doesn't mean it wasn't like 60 enjoyable. years old, dude. Anyway, it was not horrible. If and what was the what was the movie we saw the uh, uh, Rodriguez did? Shorts. Shorts. See, awesome. Shorts did it perfectly. This one attempted the same kind of thing, where it tried to not talk down to kids, but at the same time, talks. You know. It. I think that it talks over them. I think this it one? talks. Yeah, I think this one talks over them and down to me. They do. They do make the kids out to be far more intelligent than they really. Right. Should be. It's obviously dialogue written by like me sitting there. If I was in middle school and I was a jerk, here's yeah. what I'd say. It's like you know? it's like how clerks took the uh, you know the you know they're clerks, but yet they talk like they're sociology majors or something. Right. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Logan Andy loved it. How much time do we have left? We are at eight fifty-two p.m., sir. Holy would you, crap! Would you stop? Eight forty-two. I'm sorry. That's a four out of five. Oh, phew. We got 18 minutes left. Okay. Well, I'm just making sure. You're making I want to have a rapport with our director. You're making me nervous here. Oh, sorry. Don't be nervous, Joel. Don't talk to me, Logan. Don't talk just to talk. Yeah. Okay, sorry. This is not I'll your fire show. fire you again. Why did we give him a mic? Yeah, He's never had a mic before. Put the graphic on. Yay, live. All right. Anyway. Live. <laughs> <laughs> Professionals here down in front. I'm just going to go ahead and... Stop. Uh, What's next? Repo Men. Right. Starring Jude Law and Forrest Sleepy Whitaker. I <laughs> loved it. Dead Eye Whitaker. Everybody, everybody, everybody hated this movie, and I hate that because it was really, really fun. It was fun. I love gratuitous, pointless violence and terrible dialogue. The story was crap and obviously ripped off. Uh, yeah. But the uh, it was actually enjoyable to watch. There was some great fight scenes and some really funny dialogue. Uh, uh, surprisingly enough, there was some really fun. There was. There was. Don't you remember we laughed? A job is a job. No, not that dialogue. The good dialogue. This, like the whole first act of the film is just every now and then there's a quirky line after one quirky line after another. Okay. I've and any movie that, that drops a heavy old typewriter on somebody's head. No, that was sweet. That was awesome. Yeah, didn't expect that. Go one. see it. You won't expect it either. Skip to about 49 minutes in, and a 
typewriter gets dropped on somebody's head and it goes. Yeah, you totally don't see that. Tomato style. When it happens, you'll be like, whoa, I totally didn't think typewriter was going to drop on somebody's head. Yeah. But then you'll think about it and you'll be like, Andy and Joel told me so. Yep. And you'll we thank spoiled us. it in a good way. Yeah. Because you'll be uh, waiting for it. You'll so, anyway, the typewriter. story is. I wasn't uh, done hyping the typewriter. Would you stop? It? We're Sorry. doing a show. The story is Jude Law and Forrest Whitaker are repo men who repossess. Uh, what do they repossess? Organs and limbs and uh, added other parts. Yeah. Yeah, that's about it. Uh huh. No, it's. You got to do it a little bit of justice, man. It's an ultra violent AI. I don't think it's really that violent as far I mean. In comparison to, like, some of the other stuff, like Hills Have Eyes 2 and all this Saw <laughs> crap. I mean, it's not ultra-violent. The it's brother just in, uh, r- oh, in sh- Wimpy Kid, the yeah. brother in Wimpy Kid was, uh, was in Saw 5 and 6. Yeah, that makes it awesome. Yeah. Woo! Let's go see it for that guy. Yeah. Anyway, Repo Men, it's, it's stylized violence. It's not yeah. like... I don't know. I like my violence a little bit more gritty, unless there's ninjas involved. If there's ninjas, then I'll take stylized. Yeah. But just with this, it was. I mean, it was cool, but it sent, it reminded me a little bit of like the Final Destination kind of violence. You know what I'm talking about? That well, kind it, of feel to it. it? In, a, in a in a convenience super factor, I think. well super CG esque yeah. violence. You know, like um, what's his name? Lee Schreiber, the guy that I don't like at all. Yeah. Yeah, he gets a knife right in his. But he didn't. But you I don't said, care. But it, you it, said you like it when it has ninjas, yeah. and Ninja Assassin was nothing but CG violence. And I loved it. Okay, wait. So you did like you do like it when it has ninjas with CG violence? Only if it has ninjas. Only if it has ninjas. Okay. Yeah, of course. Sorry, it's but taking no, me this, this is, long to understand your taste. I I do have good taste. Um, here's my thing about Repo Men. I saw uh, Repo, a genetic opera, and that was, what are they doing? Um. You didn't. You didn't see Genetic Opera, though, did you? I saw enough of it, and then and then Paris Hilton showed up. Right, because it, it had Paris Hilton in it. I yeah. hate Paris Hilton. But it had Anthony Stewart Head, who's just awesome. Sure. Giles from yeah from, from Buffy. Buffy. Anything with Buffy, you love. I know. It's true. Anyway, he's he rocks, and he's got like maybe four or five songs, and that was really good. But the whole thing was just crap. But the idea is good, and they keep coming back to this idea of like. Diseases and stuff are uh, are all getting fixed up by um, uh, manufactured organs, and if you can't pay the bill, they come and take it. Mm-hmm. That's a cool idea. Is that, I mean, that was a great I, idea. I think that's a really cool story idea. Um, but nobody seems to be able to grab that idea and hold on to it for a whole movie. Mm-hmm. You know, because there's really not a whole lot you can do with it. You know, somebody doesn't pay the bill, you repo them. Now, how they did it with this one was they took Jude Law's character and tried to make him like. The nice guy, the guy, I'm just doing a job, cutting people open, stealing all their crap, you know. But he's still cutting people open and taking all his crap, you know. He's not going to be a nice dude. Right. And then he goes and, like, has some issue with the RZA, and I guess he becomes one of the other guys. I don't know. Who? This, the RZA from Wu-Tang Clan. Is that Clan? who that was? Yeah, that was RZA oh, from Wu-Tang yeah. Clan. You don't know what I'm talking about. Logan just screwed up the show. Are we still I alive? Didn't do nothing. Yeah, he just put the graphic on with nothing else on top of it. Thought I wouldn't catch it. The uh, the graphics are fine. Nothing's wrong with them. I was trying to make a point. I'd like to have a little dialogue back and forth here. Well, if it's we Logan's can do something. fault. Can we do a show? Okay. Is that okay? The RZA did stuff. Go ahead. <clears throat> what? Do you want me on the show anymore? I'll leave. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I hid under the porch because I love you. Okay. Sorry, go ahead. No, I'm done now. What did okay. I say? Were you listening? Well, I liked it. There was the only thing that kind of annoyed me is the convenience factor. I mentioned it a little bit earlier. It's it's you know, they, they have these people almost like like a video game placed there so you can fight them. Mm-hmm. And like for example, there's this scene towards the end where they are coming down a hallway and they're trying to get in this door. And this door, for some unexplained reason, is completely the, the hallway is completely full of random people. And they're all yeah, like, like business... like 12 people with briefcases and coffee. Yeah, and they're all businessmen, and there's a couple of security guards or something, but they're all just standing there. Yeah, hanging None out. None of them are really And there's not anything. a door on any other side. It's just, if you can imagine, a long hallway with one door. Yeah. And, and then there's a bunch of people just standing just out front of the out, door. Having a break. And he, Jude Law and, and his uh, female companion I come in... I hate her. 
Oh yeah, she was kind of annoying. Yeah. They come in and they're standing. They start walking down the hallway, and then suddenly this fight ensues, and all of these businessmen with briefcases have knives. <laughs> Knife and, fight ensues, and not just any knives. They had like <laughs> steak knives, and this one guy had a meat cleaver. Mm-hmm. Just a business guy. Just in case like a, a deli like happens. Like a sixty-year-old yeah. businessman pulls out a meat cleaver for the fight, and you know they fight all these people. Who just happened to have these knives? It's like they all came off a break from you know steak lunch or something, mm-hmm. and they just brought their silverware with them. <laughs> so anyway, this fight ensues and really has no relevance to the to the plot. It's just you know let's add some more time and make some more cool fighting stuff, right. and it was really cool. So I appreciate it, but at the same time, it's kind of annoying that it has no relevance. No, and that's that's what everything was after the first half. Once you get past the organs are repoed because you can't pay the bill, after you get past that story element, the rest of it. Is just how are we gonna fill this time? And yeah, they, which is really all explained in the first five minute narrative. Right, is, is, is the, that whole story is done, and yeah. there's a little bit of side story between him and his family, but that's kind of lost uh, about halfway through. So there's really not much story wise worth seeing. But I'll I'll see it. I'd see it again just for the. It's you know it might be action. worth it to the, to like rent it or you know check it out on on DVD or Blu-ray if you want, but it's it's not something that's really gonna like stay with you. You know, yeah. Like the only reason that Repo Genetic Opera stayed with me was just because the suck factor was so high. Yeah. You know, like it was just a huge disappointment. This one's just kind of a mediocre movie that takes the same idea and does it a little bit better. But I still think we have a lot of room to play with this idea if somebody really comes up with something to stretch out the rest of it. Definitely. Without feeling like it's being stretched out. Definitely. Yeah. Are we done yet? (laughs) They're not even paying attention anymore. What are you guys? Seven minutes? Yes. You have eight minutes. I want to play with Lily. We should probably yeah, introduce your child. Yeah, we got to introduce Lily. This is going to be her first... Her first appearance on the down in front. Look at my baby. <laughs> Look at her. Zoom. Yes. Baby. Oh, this one. Baby. Oh, hey, hold on. Is it Uncle Carl? It's Uncle Carl. Hello? (laughs) Hey, I love this episode. Hang on. Carl, say what you have to say. I expect another public apology for this episode as well. (laughs) The show went way downhill since Carl left. That's true. That is very true. (laughs) After episode two. What was your favorite episode? My favorite episode was episode one, two, and three, and then the special True Fall Film Festival 2009 episode. Uh huh. So the ones that you were on? Wait, Carl wasn't in number exactly. three. Exactly. You weren't in number three, though. Aha! That was a Joel so, episode. Two episodes before you cut me? I, I didn't cut you. Ooh, <laughs> drama on the 50th episode. Well, congratulations episode. on 50 episodes. You guys are doing awesome. Keep it going. Oh, thank you. Thanks, man. Okay, bye bye. <laughs> That's yes. really cool. We miss Carl. Anyway, this is Lily. She's my baby. I made her. She's going to be weirdo just like me, though. Everybody say hi. Everybody? Hi. The hi. only breaks that we've taken in the show yep. were, uh, I guess, surrounding, uh, surrounding her. Because you had to take a break to get married because you can't do that without being married. They wouldn't let me get married on the show. Right, we couldn't do that. And uh, and then because uh, she decided to show up. Oh, that's, yeah. And that's and not going to work. <laughs> I don't like this idea. I'm so scared for you. I really <laughs> am scared for you. If something happens, I'm going to feel so bad. Because I'm going to be watching it, and I won't know what to do. I'll be like, grab. <laughs> Has that been seven minutes of cuteness yet? <laughs> <laughs> Two minutes. Okay. So we have two minutes left. So we've got about five minutes left. We've got about five minutes left. And uh, so we'll, let's take a minute to, to thank all the people that have been involved with the show. Right. So uh, who have we had? Well, I mean, our, our staples for a while there were Brendan, uh, who's in the booth right now. Wave hi, Brendan. Hi, Brendan. you got to look this way, though. Hi, <laughs> Brendan. And uh, Mike Miller and Carl and 
Sarah Neitzert, who was who worked on the show for a really long time until this one showed up, and now she has no time for anything else. <laughs> and uh, who else was there? You mean like crew? Yeah. All the uh, random, wonderful Stevens. Yeah, we have we've had a lot of Stevens students that have helped out on the show, and we really appreciate that. And of not course, a whole lot of repeats, but a lot of yeah. Know, most of most ones. Stevens students last about <laughs> one episode, and they're like, uh, I was really bored, or I was really offended, so I stopped coming. And, we uh, keep it just as clean on air as we do off air most yeah. of the time, except yeah. with a lot more sounds of the land. But definitely, we need to thank Cat like TV and especially Ryan Walker who. Provides us with the uh, quick turnaround on our weekly show. Which <laughs> puts is, up with us. <laughs> puts, yeah, definitely puts up with us. And uh, Chase Thompson and... Uh, well, we've had special guests, too. Oh, yeah, we've had a lot of special guests. Rob Rasmussen and Mark Nanaman, who are hopefully going to go see Last Song next week for us. Because <laughs> neither one of us really want to see Miley Cyrus. Right. And, uh, yeah. So, anyway, um, I think I want to end the show. It's not think, quite time yet. Is it, a, is it about time to end the show? We are very close to ending the show, yes. All right. Let's have a big heartfelt, looking at the booth? A heartfelt thank you. You, oh, yeah. thank me, and I'll thank you. Well, I want to thank Joel for, you know, being the straight man. I can't believe I ended up being the straight man. <laughs> if you guys at all know me in person, this is not the role that I should really be I feeling. do know that you're cut off right now in the shot. Hey, way to go, guys. I'm in the yeah. show, too. See, Logan's been up there messing around the whole time. He's screwed up the fact that he's supposed to be directing the show as well. Have I been thanked yet? I was getting to you. Maybe if you did oh, okay. a good job, we would yeah, thank you. Yeah, maybe if you moved uh, the camera over a little bit and let Joel be in the show. Joel is in the shot. I'm looking at it right now. He's not no, in the you're shot. Not. I am too. I'm looking at it right you're now. All right, let's not end on this. Okay, Sam, let's move be, the camera a little bit left. Let's be peaceful. Zoom out a little bit. All right, let's, let's thank Logan. For directing well, I want to thank show. Joel. I'm not done thanking Joel. I'll oh, okay. thank Joel all night long. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it uh, it's it's been an honor to be on this show for as many times as I have been. That Andy keeps having me back and actually doesn't let me leave. But um, nobody it, else will do it. Right, and it's been a lot of fun, <laughs> and hopefully it's going to continue to be a lot of fun as long as as long as me and Andy can uh, agree every once in a while on a movie. Um, but actually, it's more fun when we don't. Yeah. Um, I do want to thank you for having me on. Um, I came on as a special guest, and then I took over the show with a passion um, and still allowed you to be on it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, no, it's it's been a great honor for me, and thank you to Logan for trying you, not Logan. to screw up the show. Every once, oh, in while, every once in a while, he does a pretty good job. Um, but when he doesn't, he apologizes, so it's really nice. I'm not sorry. <laughs> but I think we're about ready. Yep. So let's uh, roll the credits, and I want to thank Hollywood Theaters very, very much so for uh, allowing us to see movies for free, which is really awesome. Super. And uh, Ragtag Cinema, Gotcha Costumes, who provided us with costumes over the past year, and Tiger Embroidery for making us awesome shirts, and Mackenzie's Prime for feeding us every now and then, and is that all of our underwriters? Pretty mm -hmm. much? Yeah. And Cat TV. Couldn't have done it without Cat TV. Bye. Say Yay. Bye. Yay. Great show, Jack guys. Awesome job. Yay. Yay. Now fade to black. <laughs> okay, I will do that just as soon as I figure out how. The button says fade <laughs> to black. <laughs> there, it's on.